Welcome to Yeshiva League Post, uh, Podcast Tip-Off, episode number 10. I'm Ari Wickes, joined by the one, the only, the great Akiva Poppers. We have a special so- show for you coming up. We have the uh, championship Yeshiva League team of Mag and David Warriors. We have their starting five, and all 12 of their coaches are going to be on the show. And uh, all the, the brain trust is there. We're excited to get into it. Before we do and bring them on, just want to talk and thank our sponsors who've been with us all season. We have Cool Keepers who have been... Uh, Throughout the, the season, have been sponsoring our uh, segments of Players of the Week. They've been sending them gift certificates. And if you're looking for anything to get yarmulkes, Judaic stuff, anything you need, te- check them out. If you're having a simcha, they can put put things together like no one no one else can. So that's cool. Keep us. And then we have, of course, Holy Schnitzel, which is the place to go and get your grub. You know, anything you want. Oh, chicken, schnitzel, falafel, whatever you want. Holy Schnitzel is the best of the best. And speaking of the best of the best, Without further ado, let's bring on the uh, Mag and David Warriors and the uh, champions of the 23-24 Yeshiva League season. All right. We also have, I should also, uh, we're going to have also be joined by Moses Smecki, who uh, he was uh, he was on his way to Disney World and he turned around for this uh, episode. So he's going to be joining us in, in a short <laughs> moment. So, guys, first of all, thank you so much for joining us. I know, you know, Mag and David, you guys practice about 12 times a week and, and your season is, is not over. I know you have other goals, Sarachek, which we'll get to. But I just want to first talk about Spike. First of all, congratulations to you, Benny and, and Morris. I know that how much you guys put into it. Obviously, the players are the ones who uh, who get the glory. But you guys, you know, well-deserved uh, on the championship. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, 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 truth, truth be told. Morris, what we call him Mozart, uh, and Benny, they put in all the time. And these kids are really fantastic. We're very lucky to have them. Yeah, absolutely. So I want to I want to get right into it. So obviously this championship, you know, this is not this is one, you know, with all the hard work that you guys have done since starting last summer, years ago, with with the group that really has developed together. We'll talk about Moses, you know, him coming along and obviously just putting the icing on the cake on your championship team. But but Spike, Benny, and, and uh, Mozart, I guess, is what we'll call him. Tell us a little bit about the goals of the season, because obviously you knew you had a championship caliber team coming in. But, you know, how do you also manage expectations, knowing how hard a championship is to, to happen in so many different factors? So tell us about that at season's beginning to where you are right now. So uh, I think winning a championship in varsity is probably the most challenging thing of all. But when you have a group like this, and their commitment to excellence and winning, and then sprinkle in this guy from Jersey, from Deal, and get them all to play together on this in the same page is the most challenging thing. I would tell you that it took a few months, uh, maybe three months, to really get them all to understand because any one of these guys could score 20 points a game, but they decided that it's worth everybody to chip in a certain amount and not really have to take over games. Uh, we started this journey last March, we started right after two weeks after the championship game. Uh, we lost in the semifinals to Frisch last year. It was bittersweet. Um, it was my first year back. So it was a little challenge. And then once we started, we practiced all the way through the summer. And then we started right away. So these guys really were committed. We always talked about the goal. The goal is championship. Nothing less would be satisfying. So they put all the work in. It really was great. Right. And I think I think what you said there is actually even a lesson, because, as you said, the guys had to share the ball and even you, Spike, coming back from being out for, you know, two years ago. And then last year with Benny running the, sh- the show and Mozart, you know, doing all his stuff. So I think you also set that example by showing how you had all these different coaches, everyone's voice is heard and, you know, everyone has a role on the team to get yourself to the championship. Yeah, it's not it's not easy um, for any of these coaches. Each one of them could probably coach their own team, their varsity team, and be successful. Uh, but they're part of a family, and we all work together. A lot of people comment that when they watch us on the bench, we're hugging, we're yelling, we're fighting, we're yelling at Mozart all the time. But <laughs> but uh, but as soon as the play is over, we're on to the next thing, and uh, it really is an amazing piece of the pie that we have where everybody's chipping in there's not one coach that's you know doing more than the other we're all doing our part just like the players and right. uh, we go 15 16 players each person on the team has a role and everybody is part of this championship well actually which i wanted to talk about so let's get to the championship game obviously 
Flatbush. I mean, all the emotions, the the community, the the, the whole the whole Syrian so Syrian back background is there. And uh, you know, you guys never met in the championship. We know you played so many times this year. But talk about the beginning of this game. I'm watching this game. I wasn't there. I'm watching on the live stream, and I noticed. And I don't know if this was something that you guys strategically did or just you wanted everyone to get involved. It seemed like you were going a little deeper at the beginning of the game. You were bringing in kids who, you know, not the customary starting five. So talk about, you know, the mindset, you know, what that was about and if that was something planned or you just kind of, you know, did it on the fly. So it was definitely was something that we planned. Mozar and Benny and I, we talked about the heat in the gym. It was very hot. We practiced about, you know, about the Well, hold noise. on, Spike. That's because the entire Brooklyn was in that gym. That's why. Yes, it's, absolutely. Yeah. Sucking the air out of Brooklyn <laughs> and bring it to YU. Uh, we, we decided uh, in practice last week that we're going to try and keep our guys fresh. Um, we really were not playing for the first half. We were really trying to play more for the second half. You know, just keep it a game uh, and, you know, decide what challenges might come up in the first half we'll deal with. But the goal was to try and keep the guys fresh for the second half. We know it's going to be a competitive game. Flappers is a great team. Yeah, you know, we, every every game with them is, you know, tight, back and forth all the time. Uh, and then uh, when my uh, center, uh, Jack Haber, decided to be a little too aggressive and got two fouls in the first three, four minutes, and then he couldn't play the whole first half, then we had to really rely on the bench to really chip in. So right. it, it was, it was planned a bit, but we didn't realize what was going to happen with Jack. And also Moses. Moses decided that uh, he wanted to even make it more challenging by having three fouls in the first half. So thank God it worked out in the end. Right. Well, I guess that that talks about the depth and the the, the guys being up, you know, as we see every year with Maggie. And you have seniors who predominantly play, and then you obviously have some juniors who we'll, we'll get to as well. But it's always next man up with Maggie. And I think I think we saw we saw that. Um, the first the first player question I want to ask is for for Jack Haber. So Jack, we, we saw the video. First of all, Lu shout out to Luna Clips. They do a tremendous job wow. with uh, with all the stuff they do. Wow. So we, we know three years ago, you guys <laughs> for the, right for the most part, you know, minus Moses, you guys were all on that JV team that, you know, had that game against North Shore and, and you, 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 it was a great game and you, you fell a little short. And there's that video, Jack, of you hitting that, I'm sorry, taking that last second three-point shot. Good luck, didn't go down. You see all the emotions on you. So tell us about you being in this game, knowing that two years later, you're back in the same spot on a bigger stage and how you were able to really set the tone in the second half and really control Kata and really put your mark on the game. Um, so I, I know we've been there before and, so we all learned from our mistakes in JV, and we really worked hard to get back there. And once we were back there, we weren't going to give it up so easily. So we were in a fight and battle. And um, about Benny, uh, Benny, he's a great kid. I love playing against him. Very good competitor. And um, I knew I knew I had to be out there in the second half because the first the first half was wasn't great. Didn't look great for the team. And once I was out there, I really uh, tried my best to. Uh, participate and then really work my butt off just to stop him and, and do my part for the championship. Right. So yeah, and you definitely did your part. So that's, that's uh, with, without a doubt. So now this brings me to Moses, Moses. So you, you come in, you know, the hired gun, the NIL deal with Megan was the best. <laughs> you, know, you signed with them. You know, there are a lot of rumors where Moses is on the transfer portal. Magan got you, and, and rightfully so, which also, you know, we know you went there to middle school with the guys, and these are your buddies. So tell us about your mentality, because you're obviously coming from Hillel, like you prayed with Braha, and then, you know, you, it was a freestyling offense. And here you're going with Magan, knowing you're looking around the room that you have a lot of firepower. How did your game have to adjust, and how long did that take you to get really acclimated with the Magan David way? Yeah, no, so uh, I played with the boys by my, my middle school and and until ninth grade. And then when I moved to Deal, I joined Hillel. But uh, I always knew that Magan had like a great system, a great thing going. And I, I saw like, like yeah, like we could really be something special this year. And and um, I was like, all right, why not? Let's do it. I texted Coach Spike and Benny last year, a year ago today. I said, I want to come to Magan. You know, they said they were helping me the whole way. And uh, I was training from last year, same time, springtime. Um, so it was like a long 10 months and I adjusted like every player adjusts. 
and uh, we had a good we had good chemistry. We played throughout the summer, fall, and uh, thank God we had a great season. Right. I think I think when you were on the phone and you said to Benny and Spike, I want to come to Maggie, I think Spike said, Benny, get in your car now and go pick him up. And you probably, <laughs> you know, finish the conversation when you're still on the phone. But no, it, it, it's a testament to you also, because like you said, there's so much, you know, everyone wants to be the man. But the way you guys are successful is, um, you know, playing team basketball. Poppers, I could go on forever. I have a lot of questions, but I want to see if you want to jump in with anything there. Serious questions, Poppers. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, just to piggyback off the chemistry. Um, I mean, you guys have elite chemistry. Um, I'm curious, and you know, any of you can answer this. Um, you know, do you think that comes from I mean, obviously a lot of you played together in the past? Um, but do you think it's just from that, or like what what do you think makes it such that you guys have, in many cases, better chemistry than than the opponent? Yeah. So obviously, you know, we work together on the court all the time. Every night we're in it together, all five guys. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously we're working together on the court and in practice, but it's more than that. You know, we try to be a family outside of the court, outside of the gym together. You know, it's also, it's also school, hanging out in school, sitting on the same lunch table, talking about ball, talking about our friends, talking about what we're doing today. Tonight, let's hang out, let's, uh, let's go eat. It's, it's definitely more than basketball, it's really a family. And uh, when I think when you create sort of such a special family as we created, I think that it's just auto just going to translate onto the court. And I think that's what we built and it really helped us achieve this goal. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. So Phil, Phil Cher, MVP of the game, which is also Mag and David Way, right? I don't think anyone had more than 12, 13 points. You guys were all kind of, you know, you got your nine, 10 points. It was, you know, ultimate team effort. But Phil, you know, I've seen you firsthand for now for two years watching you play. You're a phenomenal ball player, and like, like Spike said, you can easily score 20 points, take 15 shots. But I think you really, what I see when we watch a game, and, and for everyone out there who's, who's watching and growing and growing up to be a Shiva League ball player, tell us a bit, bit about how you are able to control the game and get others involved and play spectacular defense and uh, you know really make your mark without you know maybe averaging 20 points a game. So you look at this team, we have Haber, Sondar, Shabit, Smecky, anybody of these guys can score 30 a night, do all that they do, hit threes, everything. So my role on this team was just to be the point guard, connect everybody. And these guys made it so easy for me because they all bought in. You know, Smecky coming from Deal, me and Josh, the juniors and the two seniors over here, everybody bought in to the team, to winning and to playing their role, no matter who was scoring night in, night, in, night out. And everybody, everybody just bought in. And you spoke about the MVP. You know, it's a personal award, but it really reflects the whole team. The coaches, the practices, the players, the bench mob, everybody, you know, shout contributed out. to that MVP. Shout out. Shout out. Shout out. <laughs> well, for, first of all, it, it is a complete team. But now let, let's get into the specific game. So – so we'll, we'll go to Josh for this for this one. You're playing you're playing against Flatbush, your your ultimate rival. Tell us about a, a little bit not only being the Shiva League championship, but the atmosphere. Knowing these against the guys you go to war go to war in the parks, you know, and deal and everywhere else, and you know how how much they wanted the championship. They had a whole new administration come in on the basketball side, and you guys are trying to represent what you've been doing for so well. You know, tell us about the atmosphere on, on Sunday. Yeah, so the atmosphere was crazy. We walked in, we were hearing booze from coming out of the locker room. So when Megan came, came to the huddle, he's telling us, we got to lock in and we have to want it more than them to get that win. And when we were coming in, we heard all the booze, we heard like, all the excitement from our fans, and it was crazy. We had poster boards to hold up at all the cards so we could see the plays because we couldn't hear anything. So but in the second end, when we wanted to turn on, we turned everything on, we started to push it, and we really started not to the game. Right, absolutely. So, I think on the broadcast they called it a they called it a little art project on the on the bench that you guys have put together. Yeah, but who who is who is the artist on those signs? That was pretty so, nice. I want to share with you how this all came along. You know, oftentimes you hear uh, when you're watching professional sports, you hear about the experience, right? And uh, how experience plays when you've been there before. So, you know, I'm happy that we've been there. This is our third time. After the first time, we were calling plays the first year in 2018. And nobody could hear us. So it was like we're all screaming and we, you know, we just we just couldn't understand the whole atmosphere. But since then, 
in 2019, when we went back to the finals, we decided that we we're going to create these poster boards. The kids in school and the girls got together and they put all the plays on the poster boards. And now we came prepared and everybody, you know, in practice, we have the boards, we train everybody to look at the bench and to make sure everybody's on the same page. Because when you're there and there's 11, 1200 people screaming like insane, and also I just put up the post, poster board, everybody got it. So uh, kudos to these guys for really trusting us and, you know, trusting the, the what we do here. So did it ever did it ever enter your minds? And obviously the game went into overtime. And I'm going to ask this to Mark because I think Mark had a really key moment in the game. We all know he's a superstar player. There was one one opportunity. He went strong to his left hand on the layup. He missed the layup. And that was, you know, a layup that Mark always hits. And I think that would either put you ahead of one or maybe put you up by two possessions. It, it was a big moment and he didn't come through. But then, Mark, you come and hit the best shot of the game. You hit a jump shot, I believe, in overtime to put you guys up. 43 42 okay. so tell us about or maybe my, i could be wrong with the numbers but tell us about how you overcome that miss and able to at the same time turn it around and hit the biggest shot of the game yeah so uh first i'll have to say when i missed that layup uh, i put my head down like generally because i realized the moment i realized that wow we could have just went off by three a minute 30 left that's the game right there i just i just sold the game right Put my head down for a minute and I have to give credit to my five players on the court and even players on the bench and my coaches. They came up to me right away. They picked my head up. They said, next shot mentality, next shot. You're going to make the next shot. And, uh, you know, a minute later with 30 seconds left in the quarter, we're down one. And uh, I had the ball in my hands. I looked around. I see my teammates with their trust in me. And once I see that, once I see that my teammates trust me and my coaches clear out the way, I said, it's time to go. And, you know, I made my move, got to my spot, and I hit my shot. And I'm just thankful and grateful that I have five teammates that trust me and uh, have belief in me, even though I missed that layup. And, uh, yeah, just wanted to, that's what happened. Right. Well, no, I think that's, that's a great It's a great lesson for kids out there, right? One of, the, one of the top players in the league. And, you know, everything is a part of the game and it's some of its parts. And, and obviously to hit that ultimate shot. So, Betty, I want to ask you a question. So to talk to us about, you know, you've been with these guys through through dreams in, in, a, in a lot, you know, a lot of uh, in the summertime, a lot of things behind the scenes. Tell us about your relationship with the guys. And, and ultimately, after filling in for, for Spike that year and really, you know, working together now, what this championship means to you as a mentor to these guys and a coach for them as well. So I've coached these guys. I started coaching them in eighth grade. So that's how far back we go. And then COVID happened. And they came up to me and they said, Benny, can you start a camp? So that's how Dream started in general, because of these guys in this room. And then uh, we started Dream, and then we start, I started coaching them again, Mag and David. Um, and it was just, I've seen their work from day one till now. So it's been three, three and a half years, four years uh, since they lost in the finals. I think it was a certain day that they said 320 days since they lost JV. And all they all they wanted was to win. All they wanted was to win. And uh, there's you don't see the work. You know you see it on videos this and that, and they play. They don't see off camera what they do. These guys are in the gym, literally in the gym till twelve o'clock, one o'clock in the morning. No joke. You know before we played SAR in the playoffs, uh, you know I like, looked at the camera. We're like. We looked at every single guy was in the gym shooting, shooting jump shots, working on their game, and these kids, these kids just putting all the hard work. And it's no credit to me and the coaches; it's really to the players. They, they want it. They wanted it. They got it. And this championship to win with all these boys, and especially to have Spike back with Mozart, is nothing more special than to win with these boys. For one, for one family, we made it. We made it. Right. I, I'm ready to play for you guys. I don't really have any eligibility <laughs> left, nor would I make the Mag and David's fifth grade team, but that's, that's another story. But now, now let's turn our attention. And we know the season, obviously, and I'm going to ask this question, and I have my feelings, and I think most people have this feeling. It's everyone's like, would you rather win the Yeshiva League Championship or Sarachek, right? Sarachek's a tournament. Yeshiva League is, is a work starting in, in, you know, 10 months ago and, and everything else. So, Tell us, Spike, how do you get the guys ready, prepared? Obviously, we know that the focus is I on the Sarachek prize now. But tell us about, you know, how you go into Sarachek and not having, you know, the, you know, not not getting lazy 
but not just, you know, looking back, but as opposed to looking ahead at your next goal and accomplish. That's a very interesting question because Saracek comes after the championship game, right? And uh, our goal is, our mindset is always to win the league because it's the high school league. And uh, we also are very fortunate. We love to play in tournaments. We have a great record in tournaments. We always rise to the occasion and we're very excited to play in the tournaments. But when it comes to the Yeshiva League and being able to uh, win that league, I think that's our ultimate goal. So last few days, you know, a few days later, we allow them to have fun in school, relax, enjoy the excitement. Today was the first day back. We had practice. We just finished. Uh, just trying to get them back in the groove. But our job as coaches is to make sure that we drive them to a place to get back on top of that mountain. And we love winning. There's nothing more to us than winning. I, they, I won't allow them to get down. We want to win. We've, I don't think we've ever uh, won five or six times we played in Saracek. We lost in the finals once or twice. Um, and uh, it's pretty competitive. The California schools and the schools out of the New York area are really, really great schools and competitive. Uh, we, we really want to win. That, that's the, main, the mindset we have. We're going to play. We like winning. Yes, absolutely. So tell us about also, Spike, you won in 2018. And obviously, you can't compare championships. but Compare it. Let us let us hear. You know, and then no, this is you've uh, had great players throughout, but how does it compare the, the 18 yeah. one to the so 24? I, I Mark, the, the Mark Sardar, because the right. uh, best Mozart, the best Mozart, 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 the 2018 Mozart, 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 how it is winning as a player. <laughs> Listen, talk about how it is winning as a player and now winning as part of the coaching staff. Like, how does that, how does that, you know, because sometimes people say coaching might be better than playing, but, you know, how, how is that for you now that you've done both? So what I remember as a player was, I really remember all the hard work and dedication, especially that year where we had so much talent. Michael Nackin, Albert Nasseri, Teddy Shama, Stephen Miz, Max Mallow, Rage. I'm going to miss a couple of guys. Ari so, Yeah, had so much talent going yeah. around on that team, but we were all so professional in that matter where it was day in, day out. We would work and that's it. And that's what I saw in these guys as well from the beginning, where I saw the hard work and determination they had to get back to that mountaintop and to be the first team to win since 2018. And the feeling as a coach is, I never felt that feeling in my life. I felt much better about winning this championship personally than winning the one in 2018 because I got this, my work and dedication to these guys and their work and dedication, it shows what you can accomplish at the end of the day and you're at your end goal. Wow. Yeah. You know, that, that's, uh, by the way, I didn't even, I mean, I remember you playing on the team. You were you were the classified role player, I think. You know, you were, yeah. you were definitely you weren't you weren't knacking in the series, that's but that's another story. But, that's <laughs> but that's 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 no, yeah, poppers. What do you got? They're, they're ready for you. They're they're this media for savvy. Uh, oh, here we go. Here we go. oh boy! All right, I got a couple of questions. Uh, let's just jump back to Sarah check quickly. I'm curious, as a coaching staff, how you prepare. You know, because um, you've got. 10 days to prepare for MTA. And then assuming you win that, you've got about 18 hours to prepare for the next game. And then after that, you've got a day to prepare for the next game. And after that, you got a day to prepare for the next game. Um, like, are you going ahead as a coaching staff and already uh, doing scouts on potential future opponents? Or, are, you know, obviously as a player, you're focused one game at a time, but as a coaching staff, how do you approach that? That's so interesting because we, today's the first day of practice since the uh, Sunday championship game. And I went over to Mozart and to Benny and I said, okay, we got to start watching uh, film. We got to start preparing. And as the guys were, you know, warming up, we were talking about, you know, what are the stages? What's up? What, you know, what's next? We, we don't play just to have fun. We play to win. And we have to be prepared. If you're not prepared, you're never going to have success. So we were talking about that uh, just an hour ago in practice. So it's not easy, especially when you win the championship. It's always harder to go back up on that level. A lot of the other schools that did not, you know, that weren't, you know, that didn't win this year, it's another goal for them to reach and end the, the year on a positive note. 
by playing in Ch- Saracek and winning that tournament. So we know everybody's going to be gunning for us. I believe we won uh, 21 games in a row right now. We only 21 in a row. Yep. 21, which really, to me, is an incredible accomplishment with these guys. It's really, we don't think it, we don't think about it. We just try to play and focus on the games. But we've been blessed with these, th- this group of guys that all they're focused on is, th- is that game. They don't think about the next one, just, just one game at a time. But I, I actually think, and, and you'll correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you're undefeated when Jack Haber plays. Is that, yeah, is that you've a fact? Done your homework. Yes. Well, you only have two losses. Spike, it's not that hard, okay? <laughs> but yeah, no, Jack has not played. But here, I have a question. Moses Smecky, incognito in the car and deal. Who? Because I know I'll get the most honest answer from I'm Moses. I'm here, I'm here. I'm with you, I know. Aria. I'm with you, All right, here. Moses, so, which team do you most want to play in Saracek? Um, Are you looking forward to the most? Well, I wanted to play Halal, get the revenge game, but unfortunately, <laughs> they didn't get invited this year. But... um. I'm excited. Maybe we'll see Flappish again. Maybe beat him again in the championship would be nice. Oh, All right. Well, I knew, I knew to ask Moses. I knew that he, he doesn't have the influence of three coaches on, over his neck. So, so that that's good. But yeah, no, absolutely. You guys, you guys yeah, are, are, are getting I, ready. I thought Mo was going to come out and say, "Oh, I can't wait to beat MTA because I'm only locked in on MTA. I don't even look uh, at the other teams." <laughs> he's from Deal. He's from Deal. Take him a little time. <laughs> Right, absolutely. So, is there is there any any so your first round matchup is MTA? If you were to get past them, you would be the eight nine game. So that would be I think Maimonides against Hafter, right? So then Hafter, you played, you've beaten a few times, but I know they've been some closely contested battles. So I guess like what is it about the out of town teams? You know, it's tough to see them. You don't follow them because obviously you're focused on the Yeshiva League. But like like Phil Share, you're like a coach on the court. Do you know anything about these uh, these teams out of town? Have you have you personally been watching any film or you know checked any of these other teams out? We played one of them in Memphis. Two, uh, two, 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 two. Yeah, we played Milken and Valley Tour in Memphis. And uh, one thing that they both had in common that they both love pace. They all play with pace, uh, especially in yeah the West Coast teams. They push the ball. They run it. They're shooting threes. They're going quick. Offensive so, fouls, defense. Right? Yeah, they always bring offensive fouls. So that's definitely something we have to adjust to. You know, get back on D quick, uh, match their pace, and yeah, that's it. Yeah, well, I, I think what they're also they're they're used to playing with the shot clock. So pick and roll yeah. is like the NBA game, right? You got to you, you set a pick, you get a guy to the ball to the hole, and he gets a shot off a lot quicker. But that's the other thing. Like you know, I think what's also interesting about your team is that. You can't. There's no. There's no one guy you could focus on, right? If you take away Moses, you got Josh. You take away Josh, you got Mark. You got Jack. You got Phil. Like I think that's what it is, as far as you know. You know the guys in, in on the court and how how much how many weapons you have. Kiva, what do you have? They seem to yeah. love your questions. Yeah, let's let's jump back to the the Frisch loss, um, just because you know I don't probably don't want to talk about it so much, but we got to talk about the Frisch loss. Um, I mean. You know, there's there's an idea out there that it's good to lose sometimes. Um, did you guys feel that that was a? I mean, it was not a pretty loss. It wasn't even a close game. Um, did you feel that that was a good loss to have? What was the discussion in the locker room after that game? Like, how did you go from that game to winning twenty in a row? I'm gonna, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let uh, Josh answer, but I wanted to share it with you guys. I think it was right after Thanksgiving. That's how they call break. So yeah. we really didn't practice much during that time period and playing them, they were just so flat our guys. And frankly, I was happy that to take that loss, it's hard to compete on that level and think you're going to win every single game. So that was a wake up call. Frisch is a great team as they shown through the season. So I, I think it was something that it was a wake up call for us that we just can't walk onto the court and the people are just going to lay down and say, okay, Mag and David is here. And uh, you know, we're just going to play that game. We know we have a target on our backs. And everybody wants to beat us. Um, but that game was certainly a, a wake-up call. So, Josh? I think that game, it helped open us up that I really got to work more as a team. And the day after, Benny took us to his house and he was talking to us and saying, we got to be better as leaders. We got to chill together and start looking for open men on the court. We can't try to force up our own shot. Once after that game, we had Flatbush the next week and we all bought in practice. That was the best. I think that was the best week of practice we had all week. And that Saturday night, we gelled, we made the extra passes, and we made the extra rotations on defense, which led us to winning that game, and then 20 straight. Right. Well, I, 
I, I, I think, and Akiva, you can, you can weigh in on this. And, and I think this is, you know, the, the team that they have here, if they go on to win Saracek, I think they're going to be, be talked about in the Gabe Life or DRS team. I know that team went undefeated. And, uh, you know, they, Jack, Jack Haber is undefeated, but that's another story. But I think if they go through Saracek <laughs> and get another four or five games in it, I mean, what do you think, Poppers, about, about the, oh. you know, the team here that we have in front of us? Yeah, I, I mean, I would definitely say since the Gabe Leifert team, I mean, I mean, they they smacked Shal Hebbett in the final of, of Sarachek. I mean, they smacked the entire... They were up on first, like, 40 points in the semifinals, the Yeshiva League. Wow. Um, so, like, I mean, you know, if Magan goes out and, and, and beats whoever they play in the semis and championship by, like, 30 in both games, and maybe, but uh, otherwise, that's a pretty tough, uh, you know, tag to take away. Um but yeah, it's it, it's a big one. But at least we we gave Magnus something to play for. You right know, now, now there's something to play for. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need a lot so. of motivation. We love we love winning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, right. another question. Another question I have, Ari. Um, you know, there was a clip on social media. There was a I guess it was a school assembly on Friday, um, in which there was a discussion about. Um, uh, you know, if if we uh, don't behave properly um, as fans and uh, be respectful and whatnot, then then it's uh, as if we lost. Um, so I'm curious. I, I know Spike, you're a uh, you're a big uh, advocate of of that sort of um, perspective. Um, can you speak to also maybe the guys too? Like, is that a sort of discussion which you have a lot um, with the guys? And like, is there um, like do you, do you think that's a problem in the league which um, you're working on on improving across the league. So I'm gonna I'm gonna probably defer to my my guys here, but there's one thing I will tell you, and they'll share with you the sentiments that I preach and the coaches preach throughout their time at varsity with us. Um, this is they're, they're professionals. We try to we, you know for us they're student athletes, and we treat them we treat them like like men. You're not children anymore. When you come up to varsity, we have certain expectations. If you can't handle it, you're off the team. That's just the way it is. I don't, it doesn't matter who you are. And Moses will talk about, you know, the, the culture that we have here at Mag and David, uh, especially that speech with Rabbi Mansour. Um, yeah, it's something that we try to do our best to make sure that we maintain the professionalism, the respect for our opponents. We don't talk trash. If I find out anybody's talking trash, uh, we have certain punishments that will import with them. Wait, is that right. why Moses is muted? Is that why Moses is muted right now? <laughs> no, I'm right here. I'm right here. <laughs> I'm cool. Coach is on the dot. Coach is on the dot. There's no <laughs> exceptions. Uh, Mag and David Varsity is another level. Um, I even told Coach, like, Coach, I'm, I'm coming from deal. Like, I can't make practice Sunday morning. You better be there or you're not playing. <laughs> so I was like, okay, all right, I'm in. I'm, I'm, I'm in. So uh, well, it, it's, yeah, Mag and David way, definitely has a great system going. Yeah, it's true. You you never see like the Mag and kids, Spike. You never see them like you know pounding their chest. I mean, they're obviously excited when they make a big play, but you never see them like you know giving more than than just like the the, the, the emphasis of the emotion. It's never talking to the other team. It's really about playing the right way, which which obviously they do. And I think it's important for them to answer what they feel. You know that role they have, they have on the team, and you know what it means to them. So I think what Rabbi Mantor was saying on Friday about uh, the sportsmanship off the court, it speaks to the leadership of our school. You know, off the court, obviously we have these amazing coaches, but in school, in the building, uh, our principals, our rabbis, it just shows how great of a school we are. You know, yeah, winning the game is important, but what Rabbi Mantor was trying to emphasize was like our sportsmanship and the fans' behavior, and it just shows how amazing our leaders are in our school. Yeah, that's right. Mike, jump in, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll just piggyback on, on Phil. It's, it's really the, the leaders and, and the top of, of the school that are just uh, influencing us in, in a good way and trying to teach us and, and set an example for us of how we should behave and how we should react in uh, different situations, even though everyone has emotions, the finals, Mag and Flatbush, like you gotta, you gotta act the right way, always. I love the hand raising. This is great. <laughs> right. So I want to kind of build on what both of their set, both of what Jack said and what Phil said. 
I think um, we understand as a team that as the basketball team for Mag and David, a lot of people are watching us and a lot of people are analyzing us. You know, like if we go to Memphis or we go to Saturn or, you know, everywhere we go, we realize that a lot of people are watching us. And to speak on the professionalism that Spike said, we tried to emulate that as a team because we realized that everyone's watching us and um, everyone, yeah. <laughs> I, I think Benny, Benny maybe can also share that because I've coached Benny since sixth grade every year, all the way up to varsity. Uh, that was my son's class uh, and his grade. And uh, Benny's like my son. And uh, Mozart is my adopted son. <laughs> but, but Benny could probably talk more about the family concept and the respect that we have for everybody. So as Spike said, he coached me from sixth through 12th grade, me, my friends, and his son. Uh, he hasn't changed from sixth grade till now. He's the same coach. Oh. Um, he's he's all in. He, he honestly, I am who I am today because of him. He's like my second father, and he's a second father to every kid he had from sixth grade to twelfth grade, and every varsity team he had since the last eleven years. He built the cult culture here, and anyone who needs anything, we go straight to him. He built us to be men. He built these guys to be men on and off the court. It's not always about on the court. It's also off the court. You know, anytime you need him, you call him. He answers his phone. He'll be at your house if you need help. He'll take you out if you need help. He's always there for the boys. It's uh, it's something that I never saw before. And every year, he just he's all in. He's all in. He's all in, and he loves it. And uh, the culture at Mag and David, since I was there till now, it keeps on getting better and better. And like the boys said, the leadership of Dr. B. Power or Mansour can't ask for better leadership than those two guys. Yeah, I mean, it, it's true. That Mag and culture really is. And I think also that is the community that, that, that you're representing because you know the little kids, you guys were all on the team in fifth grade, third grade, looking up to those seniors, the napkins and the series, and, the, and, the, and you know all the legends that have gone through Mag and David. So I think that's something that Spike has really established and you guys have followed through. So last last question, then we'll let you get back to practice because you probably have a two-a-day practice today. Can I ask each of you, minus Mark, because I think we asked him on our podcast. We'll start with Jack. The one player who has uh, been your toughest opponent throughout your uh, your high school career. Toughest opponent, um, toughest player. Uh, Benny, probably Benny Kato, definitely Benny Kato. All right, we got the assist for Spike. Hey. Spike, no helping, no helping. <laughs> Took a little right, bit of time go. to think there. I don't know. Right, right. Then we're gonna Moses. You're so next. Many players, so many people. Uh, so many I know. Look, um, you, got, you, got, you pick one. Put, I'm going to say my toughest player to guard was probably Alex Zakheim from Frisch. Mm. Wow. Alex was definitely tough last year. Uh, there's, a, there's a good one. All right, well, next one we're going to go to uh, Josh. Josh, who do you have? I think Isaac Ohayon from last year gave me nightmares in that semifinals. Give <laughs> <laughs> us nightmares. All right, Phil, uh, you're, you, uh, you're, the, you're the last one. Who do you, who do you – uh, the matchups that, that you, you know, look forward to the most or just, you know, the impressive player, you know, one guy that stands out. It's got to be Ronnie Shia. Uh, we matched up with them five times this year. He, so I obviously have to guard him with both point guards. He's shifty. He, you blink, he can hit a three in your face. He can pass you in a second. So, yeah, he's definitely the toughest matchup. Hey, what about Mozart? Oh, oh Mozart, Mozart, yeah. Okay. Mozart was locked down. I keep uh, the Mozart. <laughs> Mozart, we're waiting for your answer. Mozart, we're waiting for your answer. I don't know if you guys remember him. I don't know if you guys remember him. Gideon Belinsky for DRS. Of course. One of the toughest players I've ever watched. Who said Who said that we ever watched? That was good. I have something I want to suggest. The hardest guy when I was playing uh, actually was in practice uh, during Mozart's year in 2018. So I was filling in for one of the players. And Mozart, I was going to the basket, and of course, he knocked me down, separated my finger. Look, this is compliments of Mozart. <laughs> my, my finger. And you really got to stop me, Mozart. That was it. It is. It's right, well. like great basketball career. Somebody had to stop me. <laughs> you stepped in the way. Well, listen, guys. First of all, again, uh, Mazel Tov on, on the huge accomplishment. You guys are awesome. Was able to spend the Shabbos with you guys. Your, your team is 
as good as you guys are on the court, you're amazing off the court. And, and it really is, it means a lot. It's a great for everyone to be able to see this podcast, really get to know you guys all and all the different components of your team. We wish you guys so much success on the rest of the season. And no matter what happens in Sarachek, I know you'll have this memory forever. And uh, we just thank you for joining us. And uh, best thank of you luck. guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. And it Popper, you can see why they're a championship team. I think the word emphasis of the word team from the coaches to the players, the energy, the camaraderie, the, uh, you know, willing to let the, the next guy shine. I think that that's great. And that's, uh, that's why Magan was able to uh, capture the, uh, the championship and we wish them luck on Sarah check. And now without further ado, our plays of the week. rushes it, nails the three. He got tricked by the crowd, he rushed the shot, and he nailed it. Only 40 seconds left. Looks like they're gonna now wait. Sardar pulls up, he shoots. It's good! Sardar, Sardar, makes Sardar nails point. it! Megan David takes a one-point lead. Joe Scherr sees Moses. Moses. Oh my God. Look at that play. A big dribble over to Shabbat. How did he make that? They spaced the floor well, and Cooper knocked it down, and Shabbat came back with a big shot. Oh, what a move underneath. That's an incredible move by Isaac Cooper. Let him shoot it. Dubby, let's take a deep breath. We'll be back right after these words from our sponsor. And folks, don't forget the halftime show. Paul Fuhrberg, top of the key, guarded by Zakaria. He's a turnaround inside. Tobias comes by his move. Which could lead to turnover. Oh, oh. it was a beautiful move. The left. Oh. And the fence six to go. Go. Watch the body foul. That's a body foul. They're not holding for one. And that's not what oh, you do. Oh, blocked by Sally. Blocked by Sally again. He is this, all over the place. And it's going down. That Sally. was a Charles. Cutting Shabbat. And the ball is saved. It's a loose ball. A volleyball pass to Scher. A touch pass to Sardar. Good extra Shabbat pass. Shabbat from three. It's good. Great extra pass by Jack Haber. That was Wow, the plays of the week, they get better and better every week, and, and the, the, the level of, of play is, is stupendous. Speaking of level of play, don't forget about the All-Star Game, the Yeshiva League Pass All-Star Game, coming up on April 3rd at the Flappish Gymnasium, the Triangle Gym. It's going to feature the JV at 7.30, I believe, and the Varsity at 9 o'clock, East Coast, Eastern Conference versus Western Conference. Great players, all decided by the coaches and the fan votes. Tune in, it's going to be some great coaches. You'll get to see Spike coaching again. Um, and it's going to be a fabulous night, fabulous game. And uh, by the way, unbelievable jerseys that we saw that were unveiled on the Shiva League Pass. Players are excited. So that's uh, that's going to be a, a great night. April 3rd at Flappers, the All-Star Game. And that is going to put a wrap on our show. We want to thank our sponsors, uh, Holy Schnitzel, Cool Keepas, Cool Fringes, Keepas underscore exclusive with the uh, drops of the new Keepas that are coming out, the limited editions. And what a Yeshiva League season, Poppers. It's been about 10 months that we've been doing it. 10 months? No, about six months that we've been doing definitely this. Definitely not 10 yeah. months. Yeah, definitely not 10 months. I was thinking about Maggie David practicing for 10 months. No, we don't practice for 10 months. So it's been it's been a great season. And, you know, Maggie and David probably started on top. They ended on top. But, you know, Flappers, what a phenomenal season for them as well. And, and you know, they're not done. They have Sarachek as well. And all those other teams who are, have one more chance, we wish them the best of luck. So Yeshiva League Pass tip-off podcast episode number 10 is in the books.